Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with how to make perfect French baguette at home. That's right, I've gotten so many food wishes for this over the years, and I would always reply to the person, you know what, you really can't make great French baguette at home. And I would list all the reasons, like the flour and the water and the steam injected oven. But that was before I actually tried it. But once I did, I realized I was wrong, again. So I'm going to show you how to make Parisian bakery quality baguette in your very own home. And I think you're going to be fairly shocked at just how simple this is. So we're going to start with our French bread dough. We're going to use our famous no-knead method, which means we're going to start off with a very small amount of yeast. That's just a quarter teaspoon. We're going to throw that in a mixing bowl along with some room temperature water. We don't need warm water for this. I'm going to give that a little stir, but we don't need to let this sit like we usually do. We don't need this or even want this to start rising quickly. So a quick stir. I'm also going to add in some salt. And then, of course, the last ingredient, flour. And I'm not even using bread flour for this. We're just going to use regular all-purpose flour. And we're going to dump that in, and we're going to take a wooden spoon, and we're going to mix that up. And at first, you're going to think, wow, this is way too wet. And then as you continue stirring, you're going to think, man, this is way too dry. But then that'll pass, and you'll realize this is going to be perfect. And as you keep stirring and stirring, you're going to get a super thick, super sticky dough that will eventually pull all the flour away from the sides. Okay, so just use your wooden spoon to work that lump of dough against the sides of the bowl. And if you measure all the ingredients by weight, which I'm going to insist you do, that's exactly what it should look like. All right, very moist, very, very, very sticky. But again, it does come together enough to pull away from the sides of the bowl. That's kind of important. All right, once we get to that stage, we're going to stop. And then we'll simply wrap this in plastic, throw a towel over it. That really is mostly for looks. And I'm going to put that inside a turned off oven for 12 to 14 hours or until it doubles in size. And if it happens a little sooner, that's fine. If it takes a little longer, that's fine. But basically it should resemble this. This is what mine looked like after 12 hours. And then we're going to take a spatula and kind of knock the air out of this. You can see just how sticky and wet and elastic that is. I probably should have floured the spatula, but it's too late. But basically we're just going to knock the air out of that dough by scraping it out. And we're going to do so onto a very well floured work surface. So sprinkle a good amount of flour down first. We're also going to want to dust some over the top as well as have our hands very well floured. And I keep stressing it, but this dough is very sticky and has to stay that way. So I just want you to use the minimum amount of flour you need to work with this. And all we're going to do is pat that down into a rectangle. All right, the primary reason is to knock all the air out, but it also will give us a shape that we can cut into four relatively even size pieces. And of course you could weigh these and get them perfectly even, but I can't even pretend to care about stuff like that. You think I'm scared of baguettes that aren't all the same size? I don't think so. So we're going to divide that up into four pieces to make our loaves. But before we start shaping that, let's make sure we have our pan ready. So I have a half sheet pan with a baking mat on it that I'm going to dust with cornmeal. So that's prepped and ready for our loaves. So let's get shaping. And that is going to be extremely easy because all we're going to do is take one of those pieces of dough and we'll give it a little dust and a flour. Again, we're using the minimum we can get away with. And I'm basically just going to roll it up like that. And then I'm simply going to roll it with my fingers like this, starting in the center and kind of rolling and stretching it out towards the ends. And in just a few short seconds, you're going to have something that looks like that. And that's really all that's necessary. Now, if you have any obvious seams, put those underneath. But even that's not a big deal because once this rises, it's going to look awesome. And once our dough has been rolled out into a cylinder or something like that, we're going to transfer that onto our baking sheet. And if you need to even it out a little bit, you can do that here. But don't worry too much about it. Like I said, when this rises, it's going to look amazing. Plus that little bit of texture on the surface and those slight inconsistencies in the girth are all going to add to that authentic French baguette appearance. And once those are panned up, one little quick optional step, I do like to take a damp piece of paper towel and just kind of wipe off the excess cornmeal. This is going to go in a super hot oven like 550, and that extra stuff could smoke in the oven. And then we're going to give the tops of our loaves a generous dusting of flour, and then very, very, very lightly drape this with plastic wrap. And then once those are covered, we're going to let those rise for about an hour to an hour and a half or until just about doubled in size. And I will admit, halfway through, I got totally paranoid my plastic was going to stick. So I decided to dust it very generously with flour, and I put that back on there, and I felt better. So why don't you just flour your plastic wrap to begin with? But bottom line, we're going to leave those loaves to rise. And this is what mine looked like when they were done. It was kind of chilly in my kitchen that day, so this took about an hour and a half. Oh, and by the way, you've probably noticed I'm just doing two loaves here. This recipe makes four small baguettes or two regular size ones. But since for most of you this will be the largest pan you can get a hold of, we're going to do it this way. So I'm going to cook two. I'll cook the other two later. And at this point, we are finally ready to bake. So we're going to preheat our oven to 550 or as high as your oven will go. 
And we're also on the bottom rack going to put a pan of water that's going to keep the oven nice and humidified, which is going to be critical to get that authentic crust. So our oven's preheating and it's on to the last official step. We have to take a razor and make some slashes in the dough. But we're not going to use a razor. We're going to use scissors. It's so much easier. So take some scissors, hold them straight up and make a 45 degree cut. But the only problem with the scissor method is it does leave these little sharp tips, which you got to poke down. I mean, that's one of the first sayings you learn in baguette school. If you're going to snip, you got to tuck the tip. All right, so remember that. So we're going to poke those down. And I said that was the last step, but really this is the last official step. Before these go in the oven, we got to take a spray bottle and we got to give these a nice misting. Make sure the surface of both loaves are covered. And by the way, keep that spray bottle close to you. We're going to use that again. And at that point, we're going to place it in our preheated oven and we're going to bake that at 550 degrees for about 15 minutes or until done. But don't go anywhere. We got stuff to do. After five minutes of baking, I want you to quickly open up the oven door and give both loaves a really quick spray. Quickly close the door back up. So that's the first spray about four or five minutes in. And then we're going to do one more spray after about 10 minutes. And while we do this second spray, we're also going to give the pan a turn just so it cooks nice and evenly. And by the way, at this point, do not worry if it looks ugly. It's going to look a little spotty. Do not be as scared. Because like four or five minutes later, when you pull these out, after about 50 minutes total cooking time, you're going to be looking at a couple incredibly gorgeous and absolutely authentic French baguettes. I mean, check those out. And I know those look so tray magnifique. You want to eat it right away, but you can't. You have to let this cool. Put them on a rack until they completely cool. Do not cut these hot. Do not cut these warm. But after they're cooled down, you're going to take a serrated knife and you're going to hear something that sounds like this. Oh yeah. In fact, they can say you can tell how good a baguette's gonna taste by the sound. I totally agree with that. And this did not disappoint. It just came out absolutely perfect. That thin, crispy, crusty exterior. And the insides, very tender, very light. While at the same time, they have that signature chewiness that the baguettes are known for. And then of course, the only way to make this any better or any more French would be to put some butter on it. So we're gonna burr that up and continue to enjoy what is truly one of the world's great pleasures. In fact, this came out so good, I'd like to apologize to all the French bakeries we're gonna put out of business when this goes viral. Sorry guys, but you had a good run. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Bye.